At 2,500 acres, Sri Lanka has perhaps the largest, most secure facility ever built to contain marauding elephants. In the past, Sri Lanka would translocate marauding elephants, relocating them to 200 kilometers from their home range. That the elephants would always try to return to their home range, passing through villages and farms and always getting into great trouble. Unfortunately, local ego-bound politicians would use the opportunity to flex their muscle, prompting the locals to block their roads, demanding the government come and translocate the elephants. The intolerance has never been worse. It appeared that so many of these translocated elephants were dying within the first year of the translocation that something had to be done. Smithsonian then funded a radio collaring program and in fact it was found that nearly eight out of every ten elephants translocated were dying within the first year. Thus when a politician demands the translocation of a marauding elephant it was like a death sentence for the elephant. Knowing that 80 percent of the elephants are doomed in the first year so the only choice they really have ethically is to bring the elephants to the holding ground. It contains one large reservoir tank and four smaller ones. There's usually enough water to survive the year, but there's not really enough food for more than about 10 elephants. Right now there's 25 elephants located in the facility. To enable the elephants to feed naturally, the Department of Wildlife has been searching for ways of clearing the underbrush to create more grasslands. We've recommended that the clearing be done throughout the 2,500 acres as the forest is not compatible with such a large herd of bull elephants. But earlier we saw that, we noticed that elephant tried to escape. This fence is shorter than this highest. Being contemplated now is the construction of a second holding ground. The second holding ground would learn from the mistakes of the first one. The fences would be built taller, perhaps stronger, and the most dangerous of the bull elephants would likely be brought to the second facility. Plans are being drawn up now. Most recently, a Tusker elephant has been captured three times now, each time being placed within the holding ground, and then he escapes. Locals thought that he was jumping over the fence, but elephants can't jump. It's assumed that he's placing his forelegs upon the top cable six feet high and then sliding his body up and over. And he seems totally immune to the electric wire that runs within the compound. The politicians are demanding translocation of marauding elephants. The vets don't want to see the elephants die through translocation effort, so they safely put them within the retention centers. But there's finite space space will run out, the elephants will be also locked away, the DNA separate from the herds that, that need to grow. Really a social, cultural study needs to be done. The locals need to be more tolerant toward the elephants. In fact, they hold them so sacred, the vast majority want to coexist, but the few farmers that are affected by the marauding elephants have the loudest voice and demand translocation. Whatever they decide to do, it's not a solution. You can't very well capture all the bull elephants of Sri Lanka and put them basically in a holding cell. There has to be some kind of determination on what constitutes a dangerous elephant and if there are alternatives to putting them in this gigantic cell. Stopping the encroachment upon the wilds by squatting farmers, that would go a long way to alleviating habitat loss. There are ways. The Sri Lankan government has to invest greater resources in protecting the farmers, the villagers, and the elephants. There are methods to that. It can be found in other countries. In the western Ghats of India, where the largest herd of Asian elephants live amongst villagers and farmers. Ananda Kumar has innovated an elephant warning system. The system warns workers and school children when elephants are nearby. Alarms and lights will flash and people will take protective cover. 
the amount of deaths of both humans and elephants has been reduced to nearly zero. As part of the program, there are six teams of specialized rangers that will respond to any encroaching elephants and do a soft push, pushing them back into the forest. This has been very successful and is a model that can be used in Sri Lanka. Thus, instead of responding to death and destruction, the rangers should be trained to respond in a kind way and push the elephants back softly into the forest. We discovered a bull elephant who had an open wound to his trunk. The veterinarians immediately took action. They prepared a dart with antibiotics and an expert dartsman took aim and darted the elephant. These rangers, they're not given credit that's due them from TV or the press. They deserve it. They do so much with little resources. Are heroes for wildlife. Unfortunately, so often they operate ad hoc. The politicians demanding almost daily some ac action, taking the rangers and the vets away from their own priorities and elevating those of the politicians who have no training in wildlife. Those same politicians not giving resources, either manpower or equipment, to do their job that needs to be done for the wildlife of Sri Lanka. So the vets and the rangers are so frustrated. They love their jobs, they love the wildlife, but they operate every day at the mercy and the whims of politicians.